Members of Congress came to Columbus from all parts of the country today to join in the tributes and remembrances of former Ohio lawmaker and civil rights advocate Otto Beatty Jr. A funeral service held today at the First Church of God on the southeast side of Columbus. Good evening to everybody. Thanks for being with us. I'm Carrie Charles. I'm Colleen Marshall. Otto Beatty Jr. died this week at the age of 81. Among the mourners, House Speaker Nancy Pelosi and two dozen other members of Congress. Beatty was known for breaking barriers. He was the only black member of his Ohio State University Law School class. He argued successfully before the Ohio State Supreme Court. He was an investor. He purchased entire blocks of downtown real estate, served two decades in the Ohio State House and for three decades was married to Ohio Congresswoman Joyce Beatty. Two peas in a pod, each other's pods. And so I say to him, I got through this because Otto asked me to do this. He believed in me then, he'll believe in me in heaven. And when someone said to me that the obituary was long, I say, no, it wasn't long. I say, it's history, Mama. our history, my husband's history. Live on, Otto Beatty, bad black man. I spoke this week about the legacy of Otto Beatty Jr. with the CEO of the Martin Luther King Arts Complex, Demetrius Neely. You think about Otto, you think about benefactor, friend, supporter, again, advocate, just is focused on lifting up this community and lifting up individuals, has been doing it for decades. Otto Beatty Jr. grew up in the heart of the civil rights movement. His grandmother, Mamie Moore, an activist who stood feet away from Martin Luther King Jr. during his I Have a Dream speech. Dr. King's legacy also lives in Otto Beatty. He was a huge, huge advocate of Dr. King's words and his mission and his vision. And he's quoting, quoted him all the time, which is why one of the reasons I think he's so adamant to support the King Arts Complex. And he's a, he was our huge benefactor. Beatty donated the land that became the Arts Complex Park, named for his grandmother. A big gesture. But Neely says his small gestures changed lives. He held a helping hand handout to a lot of people, didn't he? He did. I think a hand out and a hand up is who Otto is. He was always going to be there and has always been there to help people. Again, I think he approached people who didn't even know they needed help, but he knew it. He saw it. He saw a need for Neely when she was a young attorney working as a legislative aide. He said, you're not making very much money. You need more money. And I thought, I didn't even know I needed more money. <laughs> And he says, come work for me, I'll, you know, you can do some research for me and we'll supplement your income. Beatty helped many young minority attorneys, giving them a break in office space rent. During two decades in the state house, he pushed for fairness for minorities and women getting government contracts, health care and fairness in housing. He was, in a word, a statesman. Otto Beatty Jr. has been an incredible advocate for this community and for the state for a long time. His family, from his grandmother to his father, and now his children and his wife are doing the same thing. His legacy lives. We are sad that he has left us, but his legacy lives. And you know, Carrie, he had a history of health problems dating back quite some time, starting from when he was in the State House in the 90s. And today, Joyce Beatty thanked the doctors from the Ohio State University because she said he had nine lives because of them, that they treated him so well over the years. A, a giant in the community. I think about that generational success and the mm -hmm. uh, effects of service, uh, you know, his grandmother, his mother, and then passing along to his kids. What was interesting is, when you go through obituaries, you think you know so much about people. And you said in the newsroom the other day, he played for the Denver Broncos. Oh, yeah, I had no idea yeah. until I read that. In yeah. the, and I've known him since I covered the State yeah. House back in the 90s. So uh, he will certainly be missed.